Aussie rock and pop from the 50s to today. This is Living in the Land of Oz. You are indeed tuned to Living in the Land of Oz, and we just heard Doll Squad with Cool Baby from their album Lethal in Leather. And now on the line, we've got singer and main songwriter from Doll Squad, Joey Backseat. How are you? Good, thanks, Leroy. It's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Now, I've been playing your stuff for quite a few years. I think it was 2005 or 2006, had your uh, former guitarist, Julie, on to talk about the EP and the upcoming tour. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You're about to Some go. the good old days. <laughs> you were about to go <laughs> off to Europe and then, well, what happened after that? <laughs> um, well, that lineup was a four-piece and mm. we did go to Europe. We played about 20 shows out of the 30 that I'd booked. Um, and unfortunately, that lineup broke up while we were there. Um, I then formed a European lineup about three days later. We finished that tour. Okay. Um, and then it took me about two years to recruit for the current lineup. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I was, um, I guess, collaborating with people that were of the same mindset and yeah. had sort of the same goals. Um, so it took a while to recruit this lineup, but um, it's a pretty solid lineup, I think, not only musically in terms of confidence, but um, artistically in terms of vision as well. So how do you find these people overseas at such short oh, notice? Well, I rang up our um, distributor over there at Soundflat, um, mm. and I said to him, "Oh, look, just you never, you just never guess what's happened." And he said, "Oh, I bet you I can guess. Your band broke <laughs> up, hasn't it?" And I said, "Well, yeah, it has. You know. Um, anyway, he said, "Look." it's going to be crazy what you're trying to do, but I admire your courage. Mm. And I said, well, that's fine. Just give me the names, give me the numbers, and I'll do the running around. It took me about a day and a half. I rang about 30 or 40 girls. Mm. And I finally found um, an organ player from France, um, a guitar player from Germany, um, a drummer from Germany, um, and a bass player from um, Ghent in um, Belgium. Okay. (laughs) And so... um, we went off and finished that tour, and it was it was a lot of fun because all those girls, of course, had their own bands in their own countries. Yeah. Um, one of them's actually here being me now. Hi, Veronica, <laughs> if you can hear me. Um, but, yeah, they've all got their own thing, and they just thought it was a whole, you know, a really good laugh to sort mm. of, you know, form this band in the middle of, of, of a tour and <laughs> see how, how effectively girl power can actually work, and, um, and, and we did it. It was really good. We had this massive fest, which was like the finale of the tour, um, mm. In, um, in Belgium, and it was just, we just had a ball. You know, Cecile's French, she's speaking to the crowd in French, because of course in Belgium they speak both French and, um, and Dutch, I think. And, um, you know, and a German girl was speaking in German for the German audience, and there's, there's people from all over Europe there, it was just massive, it was so good, it was awesome. And, and they had to had learn these songs in a few days. <laughs> yeah, they learned, them in, they learned them in four and a half days. <laughs> they learned our set in four and a half days. <laughs> Plus, we had to add the keyboard, of course, because <laughs> the original lineup didn't have keys. So um, it was it was fun. But of course, we got back. Like the, the other girls in Doll Squad have have got a current band. Of course, it's called Tico. So mm-hmm. that's on MySpace. Check it out. They are very good at what they do. I'm not um, sure they're actually gigging at the moment. I haven't seen them on the guide for quite a while. Oh, I haven't really been paying attention to other people's... I've been self-absorbed in my own band. Shame, shame. Spank me on the bottom. Um, but, yeah, no, they are very good at what they do. And, of course, Julie's a very, very strong singer and a great guitarist. And she's got a great rhythm section backing her up. So, yeah. So, uh, t- tell us about when you got back to Australia. You, you then formed the, the yeah, Australian I, well, version started, of the band. I started looking around. I mean, of course, people were, you know, wanting stuff for comps and stuff. And Rudy, Rudy wanted something for, you know, the first Tones tribute album, and that took ages to come out. I've only just got it in my hot little hands, like last week, I think he posted it to me. Um, and, and yeah, so I had a couple of lineups that were like session lineups in Australia, because it was really hard to recruit girls for Doll Squad, you know. Um, but I eventually found a really old mate of mine called Yolanda, and um, she's now on, on guitar. Mm. The organ player I actually went up to in a pub, because she looked like a living, breathing version of Emily Strange, you know, this fantastically beautiful-looking girl with perfectly black hair, you know. Yeah. And, um, and I said, do you happen to play an instrument by any chance? And she <laughs> said, well, actually, yeah, I do. I, I play keyboards, you know. I'm a classically trained pianist. And I went, well, that's fantastic. Give me a number because <laughs> I need you for my band. <laughs> and um, the drummer was actually a friend of our old bass player who's now left to have a child. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a new bass player now called Alex. So she's developed the sound again even further. Um, who have I left out? Oh, our gorgeous backup singer and percussionist, Lulu. She was also a friend of Yolanda's. 
Okay. So yeah, mishmash of how I found them all, but <laughs> yeah. it sort of began to snowball and fall into place eventually. And um, and it, it, this lineup's been sort of strong for two, just over two years now. And I guess when yeah. you have new people, they always bring their own sort of sound and not change the the band slightly in their own way. Um, thing. I don't know if they have like for a new sort of reincarnation, I guess if you like, of the band. I wanted it to be a bit more tougher sounding. I wanted to try and get away a little bit from that sort of cliched '60s sort of primitive recording, primitive sound. I wanted to kind of develop and grow as a band, mm-hmm. but still pay clear kudos to where we come from. Um, and I think the new album, Lethal in Leather, which was produced by Steve Lucas from X, mm. um, has really done that for us. I mean, I think if you listen to the old stuff and you listen to the new stuff, the new stuff takes it up a notch in terms of production because obviously we had someone there to stop our indulgent sort of, you know, you know, he'd go, no, that's enough vocals, Joe. Yeah. You don't need to perfect that S sound or whatever you're worried about. Forget <laughs> it, it's cool. You know, and, and, and he'd tell, you know, the other girls equally. And it worked out really well because we ended up getting a very, very objective product. Mm. Whereas that didn't really happen before. We just thought we couldn't afford the luxury of a producer. But having worked with one now, I understand it's not a luxury at all. It's about as essential as having equipment when you go into the studio. That's right. So, yeah. And how did yeah. you get in, um, in contact with Steve to get him? Well, he this? actually was being interviewed by my ex-husband because mm. um, he's also a journalist. And, um, and uh, he actually suggested you should get a producer, you know, you just, you really need to get someone objective to sort of, you know, do, do this for you. And, um, and he said, why don't you call Steve? He's as good as anybody. I mean, he's got a really objective view of, of music. He doesn't just like punk. He doesn't just like boy rock. You know, he likes a diverse sound. He's obviously pretty intelligent. Why don't you get him? And I said, okay, well, I'll give him a call. And I mm. called him and he said, um, well, I've never done production before, but it sounds like an interesting thing I'd like to try, but I need to hear your stuff. So I sent him the stuff, and he took like three weeks to get back to me, and so I thought he wasn't interested or didn't like it or thought he couldn't do it or, you know, who knows. But um, he rang up and said, look, I've had a really good listen, and that's why it's taken me ages, yeah. and I think I can do something with this. And um, then he came to all of our rehearsals and watched us nut out and oh. refine the song. And um, once he knew what sort of train we were kind of on in terms of what we were trying to achieve, he was very, very good and very, very quick to pinpoint where things needed improvement. Yeah. And he wouldn't always suggest the answer. He'd go, go back and think about this. Or what, why don't you try doing this for a minute? Or see how this sounds. And, you know, it's... Oh, okay. We seem to have lost Joey, obviously. We'll try to get her back on the line. Let's hear the song that Steve uh, co-sang on, He's My Thing, and then hopefully we'll have Joey back. Okay, well, I think we seem to have Joey back on the line. Hi, sorry about that. <laughs> my phone just died. Okay. I won't tell you who my carrier is. It might be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, so Speaking about Steve, was at your rehearsals? Yes, he came to all of them, and then when we went into the recording studio, it was um, really funny. Like, Yolanda and I had this impression that it would be really intense, and he'd be going over everything with a fine-tooth comb. And he actually got us in there and goes, um, can you run your whole set? I want you to get really warmed up. Yeah. Run the whole set from woe to go. If you make a mistake in a song, just start it from the beginning and finish that song and just go. I want to hear it, and I want the um, engineer to hear your sound mm. in total. And so we did this, and then we went back into the booth, and he goes, well, guess what? And we go, what? And he goes, that's the music done. Yeah. <laughs> we were just like laughing, going like, yeah, are you joking? Like rubbish. Mm. He's going, no, seriously, the music is done. Yeah. And he's going, no way, no way. And he's going, yes, yes, this is how we recorded Exasperations with Lobby Lloyd, and this is how you are going to record your yeah. album, Lethal and Leather. And so that's how we did it. So it's a very live sound. We did end up double-tracking some of the toms. Yeah. So like, you should, you should, people should listen to that because it gives it the biggest, most boldiest rock sound. Like none of this compressed sort of stuff that seems to be a lot of bands have this really compressed kind of sound on their drums mm. and um, we didn't want that because we wanted it to sound live, we wanted it to sound big, we wanted it to sound real with lots of air between the kick and all that kind of stuff. So we double track some of the toms and it sounds really, I'm really happy with the way it sounds. It doesn't sound like any other band, it sounds mm. like us um, and that's that was really important, that was something I really wanted to achieve, get mm. our own sound. Yeah. And, um, and I think we did that, so it was really, really good. And that is the story with X's first album that they recorded in something like five hours or yeah. something yeah, crazy totally. like that. I think yeah. I think when I interviewed Steve last year, he said they did one run-through with the music, then the next run-through with the vocals, and that was it. 
Yeah, that's right. And I think um, I think Robbie Lloyd's wife has it in her diary that it was actually only three hours, whereas I think the publicly known comment is that it's five. But I think recently she um, opened up her diary and said, well, I've got it listed as just three hours. <laughs> that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I think I said, yeah, well, that's probably the two hours that you take to set up the drum kit and mic it up properly. And, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Totally. And you also, but, um, we heard a little bit of it there, you duet with Steve Lucas. Yes, we did a duet together. Uh, it's a song that um, I, I basically had a demo called My Thing that I'd started work on. Mm. And um, and that song with Yolanda and myself and Ash and Alex and um, and Lulu and our bass player, um, we sort of refined it and fine-tuned it and made it into a fully-fledged song. Mm. Um, it didn't really change all that much from the demo in terms of the melody, certainly not in terms of the melody or the backing vocals or the lyrics, but the musical arrangement changed a little bit and um for the better i might add um and yeah and we did that together with steve because we thought that'd be a real a real gas of a song to do as mm. a duet but then of course the very last song on the album is totally um you know sort of something you'd find on a on a contemporary ronnie specter album or something sandra d would have done yeah. in the 50s it's very girl group very traditional very a very sort of naked production um a very sweet sort of love song so you've got the whole range you've got the really snarly sort of 60s garage punk stuff, the mm. 70s rock and roll, and then the like classic, classic girl group stuff that goes through the whole spectrum. Mm. Um, so it's quite an interesting album in that regard as well. Yeah, you've also you always got to have the big ballad at the end. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, but, yeah, I know, but we did it. We just didn't, um, we didn't rock it out. We made yeah. it very, very, it's very girly. Mm. Um, and I think that's all right when you've got, you know, snarly songs like Cave Girl and Rock and Roll Boy yeah. and, you know, My Baby is a Vampire and stuff. Um, Good to have something to show the opposite side of the coin, and it can be quite dramatically black and white. Um, so I think that's really important as well to show the diversity in the um, musicianship. Mm. And the album's called Lethal in Leather. You uh, <laughs> Lethal in Leather, yeah. You launched it uh, what two weeks ago at Cherry Bar, to yeah, at Cherry Bar, and um, we actually had a sold sold out full house into the second set officially. So, okay. Um, I think Cherry Bar were really happy with that result, and I. I I think Bill said that an Australian band hasn't done that mm. for a really long time. So that was pretty awesome. And um, we're going up to Sydney on the 12th of March. We're playing at the Sando. And on the 14th of March, we're playing at the Junkyard in Maitland. So hopefully those shows are going to kick rock and roll butt as much as Cherry did. And then, of course, also at the SB this Sunday with yes, Patrick Mary. Yes, this Sunday. With, uh, that's right. Yep, yep. So looking forward to that one. Lots of good gigs on at the SB this weekend, so you just camp there. Yeah, that's right. There's a whole space of really good gigs coming up for the long weekend at the SB. So, and then you're off to Europe again after that. Yeah, in May, um, off to Europe doing a massive promotional tour um, through Switzerland, um, Germany, Italy, Spain. Um, Where else are we going? Belgium? And I think in France. Okay. So, yeah, it'll be fun, fun, fun. And hopefully, fingers crossed, the band will stay together. Oh, I have no doubt in my (laughs) mind that this lineup will stay together because we are, um, it's a very different um, sort of artistic animal to what the other lineup was. And um, the other lineup is very near and dear to me. I just, I love it. I listen to those old records and I just think, oh, it's it's gorgeous in its naivety. Mm. I, I, I love it. But um, I'm really happy to move forward and progress the band by the same token. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll hear a track off it now. I'm taking get in all record shops. Um, Missing Link, mm-hmm. um, Red Eye, um, I think I-94 bar is stocking it. Um, where else are we stocking it? Let me see. You're not a, sure people can contact you through Waterfront. your MySpace? Yes, and Waterfront. Okay. And, of course, in Europe through the, um, the major distributors there. Okay. Yeah, which is all on our website, www.myspace forward slash the official doll squad. That's it. Okay. <laughs> and have you also gone the retro thing and released it on vinyl? Um, we haven't released anything on vinyl, but um, a guy in Spain who's actually doing some of our tour booking wants to do a 45 off that album, so okay. it'll probably be my thing, I would imagine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, now I'd like to get bands to pick their favourite song to finish off the interview. What's your favourite? Um, well, I've got a couple. Cave Girl, um, Rock and Roll Boy, um, I Didn't Mean to Turn Him Bad, and My Thing, so take your pick. Okay. Oh, Rock and Roll Boy is one of my favourites as well, so we'll play that one. 
Awesome. Just got a Ramones reference, I like it. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? All right, just a pop plug again. You're playing, of course, at the SB this Sunday. You're in the yeah, front right. bar or Gershwin room? It's in the Gershwin room. Okay, all right, thanks a lot for joining me on the show. Thanks so much, Leroy.